The global technology race is changing faster than most people realize. For years, whenever someone mentioned artificial intelligence hardware, one name dominated the conversation, NVIDIA. Their chips became the backbone of modern AI, powering everything from chat GPT to self-driving car prototypes. But now, something dramatic is happening. China has decided to stop depending on NVIDIA and is moving full speed ahead with its own domestic solutions. The recent Huawei Connect event gave us a rare look at just how far China has come and what it means for the future of AI, the economy, and even global politics. This is not a small story. We're talking about billions of dollars in lost business, a shift in technological leadership, and the possibility of a split in global AI standards. And that split doesn't just affect engineers and tech executives. It can ripple into markets, geopolitics, and even the apps and services regular people use every day. So let's walk through what happened, why it matters, and where this story is heading. A few weeks ago, news broke that Chinese regulators quietly instructed some of the nation's biggest tech companies to stop buying NVIDIA's high-end AI processors. It's being called a soft ban. This doesn't mean NVIDIA is gone overnight, but it does signal that Beijing is now confident enough in its homegrown alternatives that it no longer wants to rely on American chips. That's a massive statement. NVIDIA's dominance in AI chips has been one of the defining features of the technology landscape for the past decade. These chips are in unbelievably high demand, selling for tens of thousands of dollars each with waiting lists stretching months. And yet, China just cut off its own access. Why? Because Huawei and other domestic players are finally ready to fill the gap. Now, before we dive deeper, let me pause for a moment. If you find this kind of breakdown valuable, please hit that like button and share this video with your friends. It really helps get the story out to more people who want to understand the bigger picture. All right, so back to the story. Some people immediately reacted to this news by saying, that's it, NVIDIA is finished. But let's be clear, NVIDIA is not going anywhere. They still have massive demand in the US, Europe, and other parts of the world. Their chips are still the most advanced in terms of raw power. But the loss of China is not just about sales numbers. It's about influence, standards, and the long-term direction of the industry. See, for years, NVIDIA's power hasn't just come from its hardware, it comes from its software ecosystem, specifically something called CUDA. This is the programming platform that AI researchers and engineers use to optimize their models for NVIDIA chips. Once developers build their systems around CUDA, it becomes very hard to switch to something else. That's been NVIDIA's secret weapon. But now, China is developing its own alternatives. Open source platforms, homegrown toolkits, and systems that are designed to run on Huawei's Ascend chips and other domestic processors. If enough Chinese companies start using these alternatives, we could see a whole parallel AI ecosystem emerge. One half of the world optimized for NVIDIA and CUDA, the other half optimized for Huawei and China's platforms. That's not just technical fragmentation. That's a potential geopolitical split in the foundation of artificial intelligence. So what exactly is Huawei offering? At Huawei Connect, the company made something very clear. They're not claiming their chips outperform NVIDIA on every metric, but where they shine is at the systems level. Huawei has decades of experience building networks, interconnects, and large-scale computing infrastructure. That means they can take their good enough chips and stitch them together into powerful clusters that can still train and deploy large AI models. In other words, maybe the individual chip isn't as fast, but the entire system gets the job done. And every year that performance gap shrinks. Even NVIDIA's own CEO has admitted publicly that Huawei is right on their heels. If that pace continues, it's only a matter of time before parity is reached. Now think about what this means. Every dollar that Chinese tech giants used to spend on NVIDIA chips is now staying inside China. That money is going straight into Huawei and other local companies who can reinvest it into research, better fabs, more engineers, and stronger ecosystems. It's a virtuous cycle. And once that wheel starts spinning, it gets harder and harder for outsiders to break back in. Here's another angle. This isn't the first time the US has tried to cut Huawei off. Remember when Washington blocked Huawei from using Google services on its smartphones? The idea was to cripple their phone business. 
Instead, Huawei built its own operating system, Harmony OS, which is now expanding across tablets, watches, and even computers. By cutting Huawei off, the US accidentally pushed China to innovate faster. The same pattern is now repeating in AI hardware. This shows a deeper truth. Sanctions and restrictions can slow things down, but they rarely stop innovation. In fact, they often create a rally around the flag effect, where engineers and companies are more determined than ever to build alternatives. That's exactly what we're watching right now with Huawei's chips and systems. And here's where I want to hear from you. Do you think this growing tech split, where one half of the world runs on American systems and the other on Chinese systems, is good for competition? Or do you think it will just cause chaos, duplication, and higher costs for everyone? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to know where you stand. Let's talk a little about NVIDIA again. Even though they're losing access to China, they're still thriving elsewhere. Just this year, they announced major multi-billion dollar partnerships to supply GPUs to top AI labs and hyperscale cloud providers. Some of those deals are structured so that the AI companies raise huge amounts of money and then funnel much of it straight back into NVIDIA's chips. That keeps NVIDIA's earnings and stock price strong. So no, NVIDIA is not collapsing, but they are missing out on what could have been their single biggest growth market for the next decade. And that lost opportunity matters. Because while NVIDIA spends resources keeping its current dominance, Huawei and China's ecosystem now have the incentive and the funding to catch up. Another factor here is software. Think about how Google operates. Many of the best AI models built at Google aren't dependent on CUDA or NVIDIA's proprietary tools. They rely on open source frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch with contributions from researchers around the world. And let's not forget, a significant number of those researchers are Chinese. The lesson is simple. Sometimes talent and creativity matter more than the specific tool you're using. That's why Huawei's push is so important. As long as they can offer a good enough platform, Chinese researchers can keep pace with the rest of the world. Looking ahead, here's what to watch. First, where the money flows. Billions of dollars that used to go to NVIDIA are now going to Huawei and local suppliers. That fuels faster development in China. Second, which software ecosystems developers adopt? If Chinese stacks gain traction, we could see a permanent split. Third, how other countries respond. Nations in the BRICS group, parts of the Middle East, and even some European firms are now looking for alternatives to American tech. Huawei could become their natural partner. And let's be clear, this isn't just about chips, it's about standards. Whoever sets the standards for AI frameworks, APIs, and ecosystems ends up shaping how the next decade of technology develops. That's why this competition matters so much more than who has the fastest chip in 2025. So where does all this leave us? We're entering a truly multipolar world of technology. For a long time, American companies set the pace and wrote the rules. Now China is firmly in the game, building systems, writing standards, and capturing markets. NVIDIA and other US firms will continue to thrive, but they will no longer dominate unchallenged. This is not just a business rivalry. It's a structural shift in global power. Technology, politics, and finance are now deeply intertwined. The choices companies and governments make today about which systems to buy, which software to adopt, and which standards to support will shape the next generation of AI, and by extension, the global economy itself. So if you've stayed with me to the end, thank you. Please hit like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next deep dive on these issues. And as always, thanks for watching. It means a lot.